Hello everyone, this is Anishu and in this video, I'll give you a demonstration of the distributive basic blockchain project that I have built. The project that I have built is an innovative blockchain network application designed to facilitate seamless communication and data synchronization between multiple nodes. At the code of our system are the server and the client components. The server acts as the central hub managing the network infrastructure, handling client connection and processing the data packets. On the other hand, the client nodes connect to the server, exchange registration information and synchronize the blockchain data. Finally, the system seamlessly integrates a blockchain implementation allowing for blockchain operations such as block verification, insertion and retrieval. My blockchain network project offers a robust solution for decentralized communication and data management, paving the way for secure and transparent transaction in various industries. Let me introduce you to the libraries that we need uh, for this project. First of all, we need the CMake library to make this project. Uh, apart from that, we also need the libssl library for encryption of the blocks. Coming to the code explanation, Let's start with the block file responsible for managing individual blocks in our blockchain. The constructor initializes a new block with optional parameters like reference to the previous block and a hash. The calculate hash function computes the hash of the block based on its content including the previous hash, timestamp, data and nonce. Methods like get hash, get previous block and append data allow access to block properties and data manipulation. Now moving on to the C chain file which handles the overall blockchain structure and operations. The constructor initializes the blockchain with parameters like hostname, port, difficulty and storage type. Methods like append to current block and next block facilitate adding data and creating new blocks in the chain. The load function loads the chain from the storage ensuring continuity between sessions. Other functionalities include block distribution, chain validation, client management and network connectivity. Let's quickly go over the C log file. The C log provides logging functionalities for our blockchain projects. It uh, writes messages with timestamps to std out and std error. Uh, the open function redirects output to log files if enabled. In summary, the C log uh, ensures proper logging and error handling within our project. Now let's delve into the local storage components of our blockchain project. First we have the create storage function which dynamically creates instances of different storage type based on the enum e-storage type. This enum defines storage types such as est none for no storage and est local for local storage. Next the c storage local class implements the local data storage functionality. It manages a storage on the local file system creating directories for blockchain data and loading saving blocks. The load blockchain function loads the blockchain from disk while save saves blocks into the files. Metadata about the blockchain such as the last block hash block count is also stored and managed. Also the C storage none class is the class used when no storage is required. For network communication, we use the inet class. It includes functions for sending and receiving packets as well as basic data types. Uh, next the e-message type header uh, provides an enum defining uh, various messages types for communication. The C packet header defines a class C packet representing a network packet. It includes fields of uh, version, message type, data, size, data itself and other attributes. Lastly, C node info header defines a class C node info representing information about the network node. It includes fields for hostname, port and last seen timestamp. Finally, let's dive into the server client architecture in the blockchain system. Uh, first, the C server class manages incoming connections and handle client requests. It initializes a socket for listening, binds it to a port and starts worker thread to handle incoming connections. Client connects to the server, register themselves and exchange data. The server validates the client, manages client connections and process incoming packets. It handles various messages types like registering nodes, initializing the chain and writing blocks. On the other hand, the client class uh, represents a client node connecting to other nodes. It connects to a server registering itself and exchange data like pings and block information. The client's worker thread sends pings, receives responses and manages the communication loop. It also handles block synchronization. Uh, sending blocks to other nodes and receiving acknowledgements. Both server and client classes are integral part for the blockchain network. Coming to the main file, this file orchestrates the setup and execution of our blockchain node. First we define an interrupt callback function to handle signals like uh, sigint and sigquit. Next we parse command line arguments to extract parameters like host, port and whether it is a new chain or connecting to an existing one. Then we initialize our blockchain that is the C chain object with provided parameters including storage type and connection details. We print some initial information about the chain such as its validity and current block count. Depending on whether it's a new chain or not, we append the data to the current block, mine a new block and print some block information. After setting up signal handlers, we enter a loop where we periodically print the chain's status until the program is interrupted. Now with a brief understanding of how the entire project works, let's run the project and see how our blockchain works. To run the project, we'll use the cmake.list.txt and then we will go to the build directory before c making the project. 
After completing the CMake, we will run the make command to build our project. After the build is complete, we will run our blockchain application. As you can see, if we don't specify the uh, hosts and the uh, clients, then the blockchain applications asks the user for giving the host and the uh, client. When a valid host and a client is specified and we specify that we are creating a new blockchain, our application starts. In the initial run, we can see that we are appending two new blocks into the blockchain with a total of three blocks in order. After we run it multiple times, we can see that there are other blocks that are being added to the list of blocks. We can also see that every time we run the blockchain, the entire hashing algorithm of all the blocks is being changed. With this, we can verify that our blockchain is working correctly. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.